What's up, y'all? Let's talk pecs. Now, we all want a bigger, more jacked chest. First thing we see when we step into the gym for the first time is a big bench press, a big pair of pecs, and we want it for ourselves. Now, when I work with people, and just from observing everyday gym goers as well, I observe four common bad habits that limit people's pec hypertrophy. Now, this is people that I work with that are as strong or stronger than myself. So if you're newer to the gym, don't feel bad for making a lot of these mistakes and forming these bad habits because guys my strength or better are making the same mistakes and have the same areas of opportunity. Now, as always, I'm curious to see where our common ground is. Let me know what are some bad habits that you know that you have that you're working to correct. And also let me know, we can all think of that first big plateau in our bench press or chest hypertrophy training that we hit for the first time. Are you stuck in one of those plateaus now? Find out if we have some common ground, bro. Let's chat in the comments. Now, I believe in kicking things off with a bang, just to generate some extra discussion that'll carry us throughout the video. The worst thing that you can do in your quest to get big meaty pecs is to only look at your pecs in one dimension, to only work them with one type of exercise. It's instinct when we see that jacked fellow in the gym with a huge chest doing bench press, a lot of us think that we're going to get that same jacked and stacked chest by only doing bench press. And by all means, that does work for some people, but those people are in the minority and more than likely if you're watching this type of content, that's not the type of vice that's gonna work for you. Now, why doesn't that work for most people? One, you're not working the chest from every angle more than likely. Two, that's a lot of repetitive motion on your shoulders, it's gonna cause irritation, potentially injury long-term. And three, it's just boring. Why would you only want to acquire gains by just doing one exercise? I don't know about you guys, but I also like to enjoy my training as well. Do calisthenics, barbell motions, machines and isolations in an even blend. No, you don't have to do all of those things, but you should be willing to dip into each category as needed to get the results that you're looking for and accept that you are going to need to do at least two or three of those concurrently at any given time. Now, starting with the barbell, my favorite non-flat barbell bench press variation is the incline bench. Number one, it looks cool. Two, it has a much larger range of motion than your flat bench press. And as well, it's targeting those upper pecs. Now, which angle you use to best target your upper pecs is just gonna depend upon your limb length I made a cool video talking about that a few months ago, check that out. But some form of incline bench pressing is gonna be something that you're going to want to include in your program. This is my most often used accessory for people that I work with. Now for machines, my favorite has to be the hammer strength chest press, specifically the plate loaded one. Again, big old range of motion on the pecs. You get a nice full squeeze at the top and stretch at the bottom, just like with dumbbells. Now why I prefer this over dumbbells, if you have the option of using this, is that the form is foolproof. It's a fixed machine with a fixed bar path, meaning all you have to do is get into the seat, push into it, and the machine is gonna put your body exactly where it needs to be. Contrary to popular belief, that extra stability that you're getting from the machine is not a bad thing, provided that you're also doing something like a barbell bench and you are working with something slightly more unstable like a dumbbell potentially. The reason why this is good is that that extra stability allows your muscles to push that much harder. And because you're getting that nice robust stretch and the full squeeze at the top, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck than with a flat barbell bench press. Now isolations, contrary again to popular belief, chest isolation is not bro science, it is not useless. World champion bench pressers do things like pec flies. They isolate their pecs. Now, why would you wanna do this? There's a few different reasons why. These are the most common. One, you're someone that has an elbow injury, so like tendonitis. You broke your arm at some point and you're just not able to do as much pressing volume as someone like myself or the average individual. Or two, you've done as much pressing volume as you can recover from and you still need a little bit more pec hypertrophy your elbows are all tapped out. You don't want to irritate them and do more. Something like a pec fly comes into play. It's very similar to that hammer strength chest press in that you get that full stretch at the bottom and you get that squeeze at the top. Now last, but certainly not least, is the weighted push-up. Weighted dip enjoyers. 
check in down below. You're probably punching the air right now. Look, guys, I really enjoy weighted dips as well. There's a few reasons why I prefer weighted push-ups. And I myself have gone back and forth on this as I've grown as a lifter and as a coach. First reason why I prefer weighted push-ups over weighted dips is that I find that most people can just tolerate them better long-term on their shoulders. No exercise is uniquely and inherently dangerous, but weighted push-ups just have a smaller barrier of entry to where you don't have to get used to doing weighted push-ups more often than not. Whereas a lot of people find that they do need to build their shoulder tolerance to be able to do dips effectively. The second reason is per set of dips versus push-ups, you get better carryover to a bench press from a push-up than you do from a dip just because they're more similar motions. And three, I find that they're just easier to do. There's a reason why push-ups are included in military fitness tests. You don't need any equipment to do so. And if you wanna weight them, all you need to do is put a book bag on your back, stuff it with some book bags or rocks or dirt or whatever, and you got weighted push-ups, boom. So we got those four cool exercises, bro. Let me know what are four chest pressing variations that you really enjoy. Let's see how many we have in common. Now, the next major habit that I see people form that keeps them from getting jacked and stacked chest is that they sacrifice rep quality for weight, meaning they stop pausing, they start bouncing off their chest, they start cutting range of motion, all of those things to lift more weight. You're robbing your chest of quality stimulus, you're exposing your shoulders your elbows, even your tendons and your pecs to extra fatigue for no extra growth. I call that hustling in reverse. You're coming in red, you're not profiting. There's a lot of different things that you can say, but none of them equal up to you getting bigger and stronger. Again, the solution to that is very simple. You just standardize your form. I will not do X to achieve more weight on the bar or to get more reps or to get more sets. Now what I standardize as a coach is something that I call a t-shirt touch. Now not everyone that I work with pauses, but we do control our eccentrics and we do lightly touch the bar and not sink it into the chest. That does a few cool things. One, it keeps the tension 100% on your pecs throughout the duration of the set. That means more hypertrophy, that means more strength, especially out of the bottom. If you miss a bench press, more than likely, it's two things. One, you were just too weak off the chest or it was your triceps. The former is a lot more common. Now, just like with that shoulders video, I wanna show y'all a quick tutorial in terms of one, how we apply that t-shirt touch to things like bench presses, and then how you apply it to other movements, even non-pressing chest motions. We're gonna to cut to that now. I wanna take you for a ride. That tutorial was a light bulb moment for a lot of y'all. Ever since I started doing the t-shirt touch, even touch and go, especially paused, I have gotten more jacked, I've gotten stronger, and my bench press and all my other chest pressing motions have given me that much more benefit. Three, ab anxiety. Stop trying to maintain the leanness that you have or try to acquire the type of leanness that you want to have long term while also trying to get jacked and stacked. Here's the red pill that I wanna feed y'all right now. I say this, I bemoan this in almost each of my videos because it really is something to where if you're not doing it, it doesn't matter what you input into your training. If you're not feeding your body, if you're not in that quality surplus, and no, that's not giga bulking. That's not eating until you, you're sick. That's not becoming a slob. That's not becoming Jabba the Hutt it's you eating a 200 to 300 calorie surplus. That is half a cup of rice added to one meal twice a day. That is nothing in the grand scheme of things. 
Yet that small amount of calories that you are not willing to add to your diet is going to be what prevents you from getting jacked or even enjoying your training or progressing in any capacity. I get hundreds of comments, messages from fellas that have a common issue. Coach, I'm stuck on a 225 bench. I can't make it to a 225 bench. My bench hasn't progressed in three months. My such and such hasn't progressed in half a year. I'm getting injured, I'm trying hard. The reason why, 10 times out of 10 is either sleep or diet. Now this last one is the most common, not the worst habit that I see people express. You gotta train your back, bro. You have to work that back. Now there's a reason why every time I make a tier list that involves ranking bench press accessories, back work comes in S2. It might not be a prime mover. It's not directly adding pounds to your bench press, but it does allow you to progress further in your bench press training, whether that's for hypertrophy or strength. You have to have a stable upper back. You have to have strong lats. You have to have big, strong rear delts in order to safely bench press. Now, working those back exercises is also going to work the rotator cuff in your shoulder. A common injury with people that say, bench press destroys your shoulders, is that they ruin their rotator cuffs by not doing these things. Now, how much are you supposed to do? There's no exact science for it, but what I can tell you is that the common prescription of doing twice as much pulling as you do pressing is complete hogwash. Let me break it down to you numerically. Let's just say you do 20 sets of pressing throughout the week, 20 sets of chest motions. It doesn't have to just be from bench press. It could be from dumbbell bench, pullovers, flies, things like that. You're supposed to then do 40 pulling exercises. That's in, absurd. It's absolutely insane. What you should aim for is that you should do some pulling for the pressing that you do. It can even start off as simple as you do for every two presses, you do one pull, or you do as much pulling even as you do pressing. But even in that instance, I find that that's largely unnecessary. Now, in terms of exercise prescriptions, I really like seal rows. A lot of y'all know me for doing seal rows. There's no question, man, I love seal rows. It allows you to get in that quality pulling volume without having to beat your lower back and to hamburger me. So sail rows, do them, set them up, you know, with a bench, some plyo boxes. If your gym has a seal row setup, perfect, even better. I like doing seal rows with the Bells of Steel Arch Nemesis bar just because it has that camber in the middle. You can get a nice full stretch and squeeze on the back and it just feels good. The neutral grip is really intuitive. I use it all the time. Now in terms of your vertical pull, I really like lat pull downs. I really like pull ups. You can't go wrong with either one. The reason why I like these is similar to why I like sail rows. It allows you to work that upper back, those lats, move those scaps around, get your shoulders nice and loose without recruiting your lower back. For a lot of people, this is gonna be your go-to option because some of y'all, despite your greatest desire to do sail rows, you just don't have the setup for it. So this is gonna be the next best thing. In fact, if you have access to both, I would say do both, man. I really enjoy working the shoulders the back through both of those angles just for health benefits you know in terms of keeping your shoulder nice and loose keeping your mobility nice and tight you don't want to become an immobile individual as you acquire your chest gains you want to keep some level of mobility so that you can keep a good quality of life all right fellas that's been the chest building video let me know again did i talk about some bad habits that y'all have what are some bad habits that you have that I didn't talk about? Because there's a million. Like I said, I'm a coach. I see things every day. Let me know. What are some things y'all do? What did you learn from this video? If you have any questions, let me know as well. Y'all have a good day.